Are there any particular uh, professions or careers that are more uh, troublesome for you as a as a ear, nose, and throat guy? Well, there are careers that expose a patient to allergens, dust, pollens, uh, anybody working outdoors that have the allergies, people that have indoor allergies to their pets, mm. or typical dust mites or dust all around us. You have to first maybe see an allergist or get tested uh, for allergens to see what you're susceptible to. Uh, there are people that are working in dusty environments. And what about a patient that just smokes cigarettes? I mean, there are plenty of them out there. And they say, oh, smoking, I just get lung cancer, that's all. No, smoking gives you chronic bronchitis, chronic sinusitis, besides all the other cardiovascular problems. What happens is the smoke just gets into your nose, causes all the inflammatory problems, it, it decreases the ability of your natural cilia to pass along the mucus in a nice flow. So people that smoke are notorious for sinus disease. I was surprised when you said that the body produces about a liter of mucus a day. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't think people realize that. They don't realize it. People come to me and they say, hey, doc, I have post-nasal drip. You know what? We all do. But we don't know it because it's such a nice, constant, even flow that we swallow it, we get rid of it, no big deal. It's when it backs up, that's when it starts to become a problem when you're... <clears throat> You're feeling a drip. <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> You're feeling a drip. You feel, uh, you feel it in the back of your nose. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just the beginning of the symptoms. So, you know, you start looking into some sort of treatment plan right away. With uh, Patty, how long was your recovery? The next day I felt good. I mean, I didn't even, you know, Dr. Perlman gave me painkillers and, you know, Tylenol with codeine. I didn't need that. I'm telling you that there was no headache. There was no... There was no bleeding. Usually, you know, have, mm -hmm. you have gauze underneath the nose, and that's to keep, you know, from the drainage and everything. There was nothing. So that's pretty normal then, huh? Well, <laughs> I wish it was that normal. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Patty was, again, very interesting because when we went back into her frontal sinuses, that's all I had to do with her because that was her culprit. That was what was giving her her frontal sinus and her headaches. The most most people that come to me with chronic sinus disease, it's most of the sinuses that are infected. So I have to do a longer procedure, get into all the different sinuses, sometimes fix a septum. So the surgery isn't as fast, recuperation isn't as quick. Patty was just two, one set of sinuses up in here and that was it. A lot of people have a lot more things to deal with, so the recuperation is a little bit longer. So uh, I don't want people to think, oh, I'm just going to be better in one day right, and boom, yeah. and, and everything is fine. When. Uh when you do something like that, is there any kind of uh, 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 malformation on the nose or the areas? Inside the nose, you know, obviously we're not born with a perfect structure, you know, and the right side and the left side are not always symmetrical. So there are things and variations that we have to watch out for, that we study for, and that we uh, pay attention to. Uh, sinus surgery is not without its risks. I mean, there, there are risks to the structures around your sinuses, your eyes, your brain, very important structures. So we have to be very careful. And these instruments that we're using today between the 3D imaging, the uh, 3D cameras, the, the HD technology, the balloon sinoplasty, these are all to make the patient safer and to make the surgeries easier so we can get them on the road to recovery at a faster pace. What do you use to determine whether a patient is a candidate for some of these newer techniques? Well, I would say most patients are candidates for everything except for the balloons, which are mm -hmm. more specific to certain sinuses. But it's pretty common these days for sinus surgeons to use 3D imaging and scopes and, and uh, we call stereotactic devices. I'll take an instrument like this and I'll attach uh, a probe to it that I know where I am at all times by looking at a commu uh, computer monitor. So these are all excellent ways of, of dealing with uh, sinus problems. So these are pretty much in everybody's you know, library of, of usage these days. What do you think uh, is in the offing for the future? I think as long as companies keep on making instruments that help us see better, orient ourselves better, I, I think, I think uh, we're on the right track. I, and, and it's come a long way in 25 years, and it can only get better. 
Patty, could you tell when you started to have a problem? In other words, all the times you you had previous operations and, and surgeries, was there some indicator other than severe headaches and well, I get the sinus infections, but what happens with me is that I, I'm an asthmatic, so I get very bad asthma attacks and it, coughing, and then I have to go on the antibiotics and the, and, the, um, and the steroids. And my pulmonologist, Dr. Breibart, he used to send me to Dr. Perlman when I, when I started getting bad, because the asthma would be really my first indicator. My asthma got very bad, and I'd have to miss work. I'd have to use my nebulizer four times a day. And so that's when he, it, I, I would get worse and progressively worse over the years. And then Dr. Breibart would say, go to Dr. Perlman, time to go, you know, and get taken care of. Because the sinus infections were really, I was dealing with them, but the asthma, which was, was really, mm -hmm. was the, the, the bad Is there part. a correlation, uh, Dr. Perlman, between allergies and sinusitis? allergies, asthma, sinusitis, there's a direct correlation between the lungs and the sinuses. One really affects the other. So as Patty said, her number one thing was she starts to wheeze a little bit more. She needs to be upped on her steroid intake by her pulmonologist. Her, her inhalers have to be increased. And a lot of times it's because the sinuses are getting bad again. It, it plays on each other. So if I could help them with their sinuses, their asthma, has a better shot of getting better quicker with less medicine and, and vice versa. So there's, a, there's always a direct communication between the otolaryngologist and the pulmonologist in dealing with patients like Patty. Will all of us someday have some sinus problems? I think as we age or? 36 million people a year get affected with sinus disease. That's a lot of people. <laughs> it's a multi-billion dollar industry because of products like this um, and, and medical care. So, yeah, I think most people do get common colds, which can lead to sinusitis. Uh, but, you know, hopefully with, with prevention, we can avoid the potential of, of getting infected. Well, let's recap and revisit then the prevention. What do you recommend for people who are viewing this, how they should care for their sinuses before they, maybe they'll never have to see you? One thing is to know what's causing it. Is it a blockage? Is it an anatomical blockage? Is it a deviated septum? Is it allergic in nature? Do you need to see your analogist to find out whether or not you're allergic to your, your dog, your cat, to dust? Okay, so finding out what the problem is, is, is the number one key. Then once you find that problem, try to avoid it. If there's an animal in the house you love, keep them out of your room at night. Use a, a dehumidifier, use a, a, uh, an air purifier to get rid of the dust using dust pillowcases and, and mattress covers. Those are preventative measures. And then, like I said before, the sinus wash products, going to an allergist or an otolaryngologist. Yeah, you know? we'll go back to that yeah. if you would, uh, sure. especially the neti pot to begin with. I mean, sure. because you mentioned that's thousands of years old. This, this was described thousands of years ago. Uh, they, they come. They come in porcelain, you know, hmm. pot type uh, canisters like this, and it, it is known to assist the drainage and cleanse the passages almost with a, 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 a salt basic solution where it's at the same uh, salt content as your, as your nasal content. So you're washing away the fluids by gently tipping it over and letting it come out the other side. Does so that hurt? Doesn't hurt, but it's a little sloppy. I remember as a kid, though, uh, diving or getting in water and get water up your nose, it always felt like it hurt. Well, if it goes up towards the brain area where your nerves are, then it can hurt. But if you just do it gently this way uh -huh. and you tilt it over, there are some, t some techniques. Like I said before, some patients don't like this. They prefer this bottle, which is a squeeze bottle. Yeah. Okay. There are spray canisters that people use that you stick it in your nose and you put a little trigger effect so you don't have to do the squeezing technique. There are various ways of washing away all the pollution. Very important for smokers. I can't emphasize enough. Stop smoking and hmm. take care of your, your sinuses and your lungs, obviously, if you do. Um, once you wash away the pollution, then you use the various steroid sprays for your nose to decrease the inflama inflammation response to mm -hmm. the allergens and the pollution. And once you've done that and the steroid sprays, you should be good to go. 
If not, then you have to come to see a doctor like myself. We only have a couple of seconds left, but again, there are, how many sinuses did you say there were? Well, you have the pair of sinuses in your forehead, right. in your cheeks, behind your eyes, the ethmoid, and then way back behind your nose, which is the sphenoid sinus. And they all drain into your nose a liter a day. Never realized there were that many around. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Perlman. Thank you, Patty, very much okay. for, for sharing your story and also for the expertise that you have. Appreciate you being here today. My pleasure. For years, people suffering from chronic sinusitis thought that there was no treatment to ease the discomfort. With the new surgical techniques, like you just saw, there may be hope. So I want to thank you for watching, and if you would like further information on what you saw today, you can log on to our website, www.chsli.org. I'm Roland Smith, wishing you goodbye and good health.